Hi everyone, welcome to my Autodesk screencast. My name is Zan Ta and I work for Repro Products in Smyrna, Georgia. I'm an Autodesk certified instructor and hold many certifications in multiple Autodesk products for the AEC industry. I hope you enjoy my screencast. If you'd like to see more of my screencast, please search for VAR 2015, that's V-A-R 2015, or my name. Please don't forget to give me a thumbs up after you watch it. In today's screencast, we'll be taking a look at Autodesk Point Layout 2016 in Navisworks. Here I am in Navisworks Manage 2016. I have my uh, Navisworks model open. As you can see from the three architecture main view, you can see a structural 3D view, an MEP 3D main view, and then some aggregated views, for example, the MEP and structural only. We'll go into, say, the base plate 3D view, anchor 3D view. And I'll zoom in here. There are some objects already set up. Uh, for example, these uh, bolts for the anchor plates. I'd like to use Autodesk Point Layout to actually place those 3D points for field verification. If you notice, I also have sets turned on, and I can take a look at all the different objects that I have created sets for. Um, <clears throat> You have also the selection tree turned on as well, so you can see what you're looking at and working with. If I select the column base plate set, it will go ahead and select all of the base plates that are in my saved selection set. Once all of these objects have been selected, I can go to the Tool Add-ins 1 tab of the ribbon, which is where you will find Autodesk Point Layout 2016. Uh, extension add-ins. Let's let this give it some time for it to grab all of the uh, objects. Now, just a quick note for those who are not aware of what Autodesk Point Layout is. This is a new software for the AEC industry, mainly geared towards targeting GCs, subs, and field uh, intendant, superintendents. They're tasked with getting out there and marking all the existing conditions of, and actually things such as stub outs, uh, embeds, and uh, reinforcement plate points. Um, so that way they know exactly where these, these objects have to be in the actual physical world uh, compared to that of the 3D model. Now that I have all of those objects selected, I can use the Autodesk Point Layout tool. It'll open up. And here there are several ways for me to work with these points. I can just select points. I can navigate to a point. I can set their color and scale, so on and so forth. Because I have objects already selected, I can just mark those selections. So I choose Mark Selection, and I will pick Geometry. And what it will do is it will look at all the physical 3D geometry of those objects and automatically place as many points as necessary. Uh, and obviously, you can go through the task of deleting the ones that you don't want. Um, or you can be more specific and just specify things like the uh, top elevation or the bottom elevation. So I'll let this thing run. And once it's finished placing points, we'll move on to placing other layout points in the 3D model. Now, why do we even bother going through and using this software to create these points? If you look at it from the perspective of the old traditional method, you either did it by hand with a tape and, uh, tape and pencil board. Um, you might have had a total station uh, that you're using uh, that is has a little tablet on it, and the tablet isn't uh, 3D or graphic user friendly. It brings in an Excel file or some kind of database file, and you've got to get out there and really kind of hunt and peck and figure out where you are and where those points sit. Um, now, I'm going to go ahead and specify the top. I'll specify standard, and we'll put in here uh, column base. Plate points. 
hit OK. And we'll specify it as a custom one, call it column base plate points. Hit OK. And we want them as stakeouts. And it will actually run through the entire model, select those th all those 3D objects, and place those points, as you can see. Now, because I chose geometry, it looked at that 3D extrusion, if you will, and it placed as many points as it can around the perimeter of the circle of that cylinder. So again, like I said, you can go through and you can delete the ones you don't need. Let's head over to another aggregated view, say pipe hangers. Um, if I select the duct pipe hangers in a selection set, again, I can use point layout. And again, I can click mark selections. And this time I'm going to say uh, top center, standard. Call it uh, hanger points. Hit OK. And we'll specify it as hanger points. And it will be stick out as well. And again, it will run through and grab all the file, all the objects, and place those points as you can see here. Now, if we want to, we can actually manage those points by clicking Manage. And we can pick the points that we want to work with and filter them however we need to filter them. So let's just say, hypothetically, I want to select all of them. I'll apply them. I'll pick the ones that I need. Oh, by the way, we can expand this window, if you will, so you can get a better idea what the vertical columns are and what they're called. And for example, we'll go through and we'll say, let's do uh, this series and scroll down to say just this series here and we'll set the color and we'll make it some other color like red and hit OK and so now you can see them a little bit sharper and clearer when you're working obviously with the Autodesk uh, point layout in Navisworks the easiest way for you to work is set up your views set up your sets and it'll just make it faster and easier for you to grab all the objects and place the points using manage points. This was a quick screencast uh, run through on Autodesk Point Layout from within Navisworks. Thanks for watching my screencast and please don't forget to give me a thanks up.